As a homeowner and a tinkerer, it's fun to have projects around the house. And we all have those projects that take on a life of their own, and occasionally we get caught up in the details. One of the projects that I started recently and am nearly finished with is a basement living room remodel. Part of that remodel was updating the lighting and adding an additional light switch. Along with the lights, I wanted to add a unique modern switch plate. And after looking at home improvement stores and big box stores, I just really didn't find anything that I liked. Now, some people might say that nitpicking, but I had an idea that I really wanted and I just couldn't find it out there. So I pulled out Autodesk Inventor and used it to design the light switch plate that I had in mind. Hi, my name is Stephen Shane, AKA the 3D Professor, and this is the 3D Professor's Lab. Today we're going to use Autodesk Inventor to design a switch plate that can be used for a double decorative style switch set for my living room remodel. When it comes to design, there's a variety of programs out there that work really well. Autodesk Fusion 360 is one of those. And there are others like SolidWorks, Katia, Unigraphics, just to name a few. The reason why I usually choose Autodesk Inventor is twofold. First, I've been using it since release one, and I'm really familiar with it. I find the tools in the software to be very flexible, intuitive, and I like the way assemblies work better than Fusion 360. Plus, I don't really use any other design software at the moment, although I have used most of them in the past. Second, I like Autodesk Inventor's workflow. While it is the same in most other programs of its type, Inventor is easy to work with when creating sketches and solids, and it offers a wide range of tools outside of standard design, like finite element analysis, mold design, and advanced CAM. And with Autodesk's AnyCAD, I have the ability to work with dozens of file formats directly within Autodesk Inventor. Without further ado, let's get started. The idea behind the design is for a two-piece light switch plate that can be illuminated with LEDs from behind when the lights go out. For this, I used an Arduino Nano and a couple of UV LEDs. Here, I'm just going to go through the creation of the wall plate and insert for it. I'm not gonna go deep into setting up and programming the Arduino, I might save that for another video. Subscribe and click the bell notification icon and you'll get notified when that video comes out. Let's take a quick look at the finished assembly. This is a two-part assembly with the switch plate and the switch plate insert added and constrained. As I rotate the view and take a look at the back of the plate, you'll see there are spaces for the LEDs and some runs where I can place the wires. There's also a couple of indents above and below each switch. I made these because when I had done the first iteration of this, the screws that held the switches into the electrical box protruded out a little further than I thought, and it caused the switch plate not to be seated properly when it was screwed in. These recesses let the screws fit into the plate and let the plate sit flush against the wall. To work through the first part of creating the switch plate and the insert, I'll create a new part. I have a few options to do this. I can change to the home screen, use the file menu, or from the quick access toolbar, click the new dropdown and select part. First thing I did, was a little bit of research on the standard size for a double switch decorative wall plate. Since these are all standardized, it was easy enough just to Google the dimensions that I needed to create the first sketch with. Since I'm using the sketch for more than one element of the switch plate, I'll create three rectangles and four points. I'll go ahead and create the first rectangle which will represent the outside dimension of the plate. This plate is going to be square. I'll place a dimension on the top and make that 5.25 inches. I'll also center it around the origin. So I'll create a dimension 
from the left side to the origin point and make the dimension half of the top dimension by clicking on the top dimension and adding a divided by 2 into the formula. For the side dimension, I'll pick the top and bottom lines, make that dimension 5.25 inches as well, and I'll do the same for the vertical placement, adding a dimension from the top line to the origin point and clicking on the vertical dimension and adding a divided by 2 into the formula. Then I'll create a smaller rectangle on the left of the origin and place another on the right of the origin. These will be the switch cutouts. Once I have the two rectangles placed, I'll add dimensions to them. But I'm first going to select the collinear constraint and make the top of the rectangles collinear with each other, and then make the bottom of the rectangles collinear with each other. It just makes it easier for dimensioning later. Clicking on the dimension tool, I'll add a dimension for the width of the right rectangle and bring that dimension down here and set it to be 1.31 inches. And I'll dimension the width of the left rectangle. Set the dimension and make it equal to the first dimension. For the moment, I'm not going to add a dimension for the offset from the center because I'm going to use a set of construction lines for that. I'll add a vertical dimension from the top to the bottom, place it, and set the value to 2.63 inches. Since I'm centering everything around the origin, I'll add a dimension from the top of the opening to the origin point, place it, and set the value to the vertical dimension divided by 2. Now I need a way of positioning both the points that I'm going to create in the xy axis and the rectangles along the x axis. An easy way to do that is to create another rectangle and make it from construction lines. There's two ways to work with construction lines. You can create a regular line first and convert it to a construction line, or turn on construction and create the lines as construction lines from the get-go. Just don't forget to turn off construction when you're done. I'll click construction to activate it. Then I'll click to add another rectangle. This time, I'm going to go from just about here on the upper left to just about here on the lower right. I'll right click and select OK from the marking menu and add a few more dimensions. I'll add a vertical dimension, set the value of that dimension to 3.812 inches. To center it vertically, I'll create a dimension from the top line to the origin point. Set the value to be the vertical dimension divided by 2. I'll select the left side, then the right side, and set the width of the rectangle to 1.812 inches. Again, I'll center it going from the left side to the origin point and setting that dimension to the width divided by 2. I don't want to forget to turn off construction. That way the next object I create will not be a construction object. Now I easily could have created just one rectangle and two points and created a rectangular array for the second switch cutout. But since there's only two switch cutouts, it really didn't take any extra time to put everything into one sketch. The next step is to add points that will end up being the center points for the mounting holes. I'll click point. Then place a point at each corner of the rectangle I just made. One here, one in this corner, this corner, and the last corner. Lastly, for the sketch, I'll use a coincident constraint to select the midpoint of the top line for the right switch opening and constrain it to the vertical right edge of the construction rectangle. Do the same on the left picking the midpoint, then picking the left edge of the construction rectangle. 
That finishes the initial sketch. So I'll click Finish Sketch and move on to the first feature. Selecting Extrude, I'll pick the outer profile, leaving the holes open for the switches. In Distance A, I'll set the value to 0.3725 inches. Set the direction to Flipped. This will extrude the profile so the sketch is on the front face. This makes it easier when adding holes. When that's all set, I'll click OK, and I have the rough shape of my wall plate. One thing to notice is that the sketch is consumed by the extrusion, and I want to share the sketch so I can use it for the holes as well. I'll open Extrusion 1 and right click on the sketch. From the right click menu, I'll choose Share Sketch. This will make the sketch visible and place it at the top level of the hierarchy. Clicking Hole. For the positions, I'll make sure the four points are selected from the sketch. I'll set the hole type to clearance hole and the seat to countersink. In the fastener rollout, I'll set the standard to ANSI unified screw threads, the fastener type to flathead machine screw 82 degrees, size to number eight, and the fit to normal. One thing that's important to think about when it comes to the fit is the dimensional accuracy of your printer. If you're not sure if it's very accurate, you can change the fit to be loose instead of normal. This will give you a little extra room for the screw to fit through the hole. In the behavior rollout, I'll set the termination to through all. Leave the direction and the rest of the parameters at their defaults. Then click OK. This creates the wall plate mounting holes. One thing you'll notice is that the original sketch that created the first extrusion is still visible. Now I can leave it visible if I want to be able to utilize the dimensions for other features, but I can always turn the visibility on if I need it later. For now, I'm going to right click on the sketch and uncheck visibility. That will hide the sketch. The next feature is going to be the inset on the back. I'll go ahead and start a new sketch and rotate the view so I see the back of the wall plate. I'll click to start a new sketch on the back. I want to project the geometry of the wall plate so I can use it to offset a border. I'll click Project Geometry. Then click on the back surface. That will project the entire surface into this sketch. I'm going to choose Offset and offset the outer perimeter a distance of 0 0.9 inches towards the inside. Then I'll finish the sketch. I'll add an extrude feature. The profile I want to select will be the entire back face on the inside of that 0 0.09 border. I'll set the direction to flipped, the distance A to 0 0.185 inches. For the output, I want to set the Boolean to cut. That will remove enough material so that the wall plate fits nicely over the switches. Then I'll click OK. Now I want to add the features for the front of the wall plate. I'll go ahead and start a new sketch, rotate around the model so I can see the front, and click on the front surface to create the sketch. Again, I want to project the geometry of the wall plate so I can use it to offset a border. I'll click Project Geometry, then click on the front surface. That will project the entire surface into this sketch. I'll click Offset and offset the perimeter of the left cutout a distance of 0 0.09 inches towards the outside. Then I'll click the border of the right cutout and set the distance to 0 0.09 inches. Next, 
I'll draw a line across the top from the left edge to the right edge. Then draw another line at the bottom from the left edge to the right edge. As I'm drawing these lines, I need to keep them horizontal and parallel to the top edge and the bottom edge. I want to dimension these two lines from the outline of the switch cutouts. I'll add a dimension, clicking on the top edge of one of the switch cutout outlines to the top line, and set the dimension value to 0.79 inches. Then I'll do the same for the bottom, clicking on the bottom edge of the cutout and the bottom line, setting the dimension value to 0.79 inches. Then I'll finish the sketch. I'll create an extrusion from the new profile, selecting the upper bar profile, then the lower bar. Zooming in, I can get a better look at the profiles around each cutout. Carefully selecting each profile, I need to make sure that I don't select the opening. In all, I should have four profiles selected. In the Properties panel, I'll keep the direction at default, set the distance to 0.09 inches, leave the Boolean set to Join, and click OK. Moving forward, I want to add a few fillets to the geometry. From the Modify panel, I'll choose Fillet. I'll pick the four inside edges on each of the switch cutouts. One, two, three, four for the left side, and one, two, three, four for the right side. That gives me eight selected edges. I'll set the radius to 0 0.06 inches, leaving all the other parameters at their defaults, and click OK. The next set of fillets will be for the outer edges of the plate. I'll choose Fillet and select the four corner edges of the wall plate. One, two, three, four. Set the radius to 0 0.06 inches and click OK. Since this wall plate is going to have a cover on it, I want to make a set of slots that can be used to press fit the cover onto the wall plate. To do this, I'll create a small rectangle and make a pattern from it. I'll start a new 2D sketch, rotating around to the back of the plate and selecting the back face to start the sketch. I'll create a small rectangle. Just size it about this big. Adding a few dimensions, I'll set the width to 0.125 inches and set the height to be 0.5 inches. After setting the width and the height, I'll pick the top edge of the rectangle and create a dimension to the top edge of the overall wall plate, setting the dimension to 0 0.6875 inches. From the left edge of the rectangle, I'll create a dimension to the left edge of the wall plate and set the dimension to 0 0.25 inches. Then I'll finish the sketch. I'll create another extrude feature, selecting the rectangular profile. I'll set the direction to flipped, set distance A to through all, and make sure the Boolean is set to cut. Once that looks all right, I'll click OK to add the extrusion. Now I want to create a rectangular array to make four slots in the plate. On the ribbon, Pattern panel, I'll click Rectangular Pattern. For the feature, I'll pick the rectangular extrusion. For Direction 1, I'll pick the top edge. And for Direction 2, I'll pick one of the vertical edges. Depending on the edge, I may need to flip the direction so that it's going the right way. 
Leave the column and row count set to 2. Set the distance value for direction 1 to 4.625 inches and the distance value for direction 2 to 3.375 inches. And then leave the direction option set to spacing. Then click OK to create the pattern. To create some clearance space for the screws that are used for mounting the decorative switches, I need to add some recess holes onto the back of the plate. To do that, I'm going to place four points in a sketch and create a hole feature using those points. I'll start a new 2D sketch. Rotate around to the back and click on the back plane of the switch. Clicking Project Geometry, I'll pick on the back face of the switch plate and project the geometry into the sketch so I can use it. I'll activate the construction option and then create a rectangle starting from just below the top left mounting hole and completing it just above the lower right mounting hole. I'll turn off construction and set a couple of dimensions. I'll add a dimension and pick the top line of the rectangle to the center of one of the top holes. I'll set the dimension value to 0 0.275 inches. Then create a second dimension from the lower edge to the center of one of the lower mounting holes, setting the dimension equal to the first dimension. Selecting the coincident constraint, I'll pick the left edge of the rectangle and constrain it to the midpoint of the top edge of the left switch opening. I'll do the same thing on the other side, selecting the right edge and constraining it to the midpoint of the top edge of the right switch opening. On the Create panel, I'll select the point and place a point at each corner. One, two, three, four making sure the points are constrained to those corners. Then I'll finish the sketch. From the Modify panel, I'll click Hole. For the Input Geometry, I'll pick the four points from the previous sketch. Set the Hole Type to Simple Hole, Seat to None, set the Termination to Distance, Direction to Default, and set the Drill Point to flat. For the dimensions, I'll set the depth to 0.08 inches and the diameter to 0.29 inches. Then click OK to create the holes. One thing I need to do is add a chamfer to the back of the holes. This is because with the holes being flat, when I go to 3D print the plate, there will be a gap where the mounting hole and the clearance hole are too close together. From the Modify panel, I'll pick Chamfer. I'll pick the back edges of the four holes that I just created and set the distance value to 0 0.06 inches. Then click OK. The last touch is to create a fillet on the front of the plate around the top and the bottom. From the Modify panel, I'll click Fill It. I'll select the top edge. Then I'll select the bottom edge. Since these edges form a continuous line that goes from the left side around to the right side, selecting just the middle segment will select all the edges that I need. I'll set the radius to 0 0.06 inches. Then Click OK to accept the fillet. This creates the basic wall plate. Now I can move on to creating the assembly and the wall plate insert. The wall plate that I'm going to be creating for the illuminated version will have spaces for the LEDs and some wire channel. But again, that's for a later time. For now, I'll go ahead and save the file. From the File tab, I'll click Save As. In the Save As dialog, I'll name the file Decorative Double 
switch, plate, then click Save. In order to make the insert, I'm going to create an assembly first and reference the wall plate. This allows me to project elements of the switch plate that I can use when building the insert. From the Quick Access Toolbar, I'll select the New dropdown and pick Assembly. Before I do anything, I'll click to save the assembly file. In the Save As dialog, I'll name it Decorative Double Switch Plate, and then click Save. Now I want to place the wall plate that I created into this assembly so I can use it as a reference. From the Assemble tab, Component Panel, I'll click Place. I'll navigate to the Work folder and select the Decorative Double Switch Plate. Then click Open to insert it into the assembly file. Now I can place the switch plate by clicking somewhere in the view. Then I'll press Escape. If I don't press Escape or right click and end placement, every time I click, I'll add another switch plate, which I don't want. To keep the switch plate from moving and make it the basis for any constraints, I want to ground the switch plate that I just placed. I can do that by right clicking on the decorative double switch plate in the browser and choosing Grounded from the right click menu. The first thing I want to do is create a slightly offset plane from the front of the inset area on the switch plate. I don't want to create a new part directly on the switch plate. The reason for this is that I'm going to 3D print both parts, and I want to have at least one layer thickness of separation between the two. Once again, the reason for this is because 3D printing, while accurate on many more expensive 3D printers, Having a slight gap can account for inaccuracies on lower cost 3D printers. From the Assemble tab, Work Features panel, I'll click Plane. I'll click on the inset face and drag away from the face to create a gap. In the Distance Entry, I'll set the dimension to 0.2 millimeters, or one thickness of a layer based on my print settings. Then I'll press Enter to accept the value. From the Component panel, I'll click Create. This will let me create a new part directly in the assembly. The Create In Place Component dialog opens, where I can specify the component name, the template that I'm going to use, the file location, and bill of material structure, along with a few other options. In the new component name type in, I'll enter decorative double switch insert. And make sure the new file location is where I want it to be. If I need to change the location, I can click on the browse button to the right of the entry and set both a folder location and file name. Once everything is set, I'll click OK. Now I can place where I want to start creating this part, and I'll click on the work plane that I just created. This locates the part on the plane and begins in-place editing directly in the assembly file. To start, I'll create a new 2D sketch and pick on the smaller local XY plane. This creates the sketch and allows me to start editing. I'll start out by projecting geometry into this sketch that I can use to work from. From the Create panel, I'll click Project Geometry and pick the inset plane from the wall plate. This does two things. It projects the geometry into this plane and creates an adaptive reference to the geometry on the switch plate itself. What this does is anytime I update the switch plate, I can update the geometry on the plate insert to reflect the changes. 
There are a few caveats, however, when working with adaptive geometry. One of those caveats is when you replace a piece of geometry that's referenced, you could potentially break the adaptivity. So you need to be careful when working with adaptive parts. I do have the option to turn off adaptivity by right-clicking on the part and unchecking adaptive. For now, I'll just leave it as is. The first thing I'll do is offset the rectangular edges around the openings. I'll click Offset and offset the left rectangle by 0.25 millimeters. Then offset the right rectangle by 0.25 millimeters. Then I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to offset the smaller rectangles where the mounting slots are. I'll start with the upper left, offsetting the rectangle towards the inside by 0.2 millimeters. Then I'll pan over to the right side and offset that rectangle by 0.2 millimeters. I'll pan down and offset this rectangle by 0.2 millimeters. I'll pan over to the left and finally offset the last rectangle by 0.2 millimeters. Now I'm going to draw a line. I'm going to start at the top and connect the left edge to the right edge, keeping the line parallel to the top. I'll do the same at the bottom, drawing a line from the left edge to the right edge, keeping it parallel to the bottom. I'll add a dimension from the line to the bottom edge and set the value to 0.25 millimeters. Then I'll choose the line at the top and draw a dimension from that line to the top edge, setting the value to 0.25 millimeters as well. Now that I'm done, I'll finish the sketch. At this point, I'm going to save the assembly. So I'll click Return to return to the assembly level. Then click Save from the Quick Access toolbar. This opens the Save dialog for the assembly, and I can see that both the assembly file and the new part file will be saved, and what the save state is for each of those files. I'll go ahead and save the assembly. Instead of editing the plate insert in the assembly, I'm going to open it in a new window and work with it there. This makes it a little easier to work with since now I have all of the elements that I need. I'll right-click on the decorative double switch insert and select Open from the right-click menu. From the Create panel, I'll click Extrude. And I want to click on not only the large open area, I want to fill in all the small holes that get created because of the different regions that I have in the sketch. The easiest thing to do is rotate around to the back and carefully pick the regions that I want to extrude. Once I've selected all of the regions that I want to extrude, I'll set the distance to 0 0.09 inches minus 0.2 millimeters. This will make a surface flush with the front of the switch plate. Make a note that the sketch is currently adaptive. If I want to be able to share the sketch, I need to turn off adaptivity on the extrusion, which will trickle down to the sketch. I'll right click on the extrusion and click adaptive. Currently it has a check next to it. This will uncheck it and turn off adaptivity for the extrusion. Next, I'll open the extrusion and right click on sketch one and choose Share Sketch. I have two additional extrusions I need to make. One will be for the mounting points, and the other will be for a slightly recessed set of circles that will allow room for the wall plate mounting screws. From the Create panel, click Extrude. For the mounting points, I want to choose the four inner rectangles 
at each corner as the profiles. I'll zoom in a little bit so I can make sure to choose the inside profile on the upper left. Pan over and pick the upper profile on the upper right. Pan over and pick the profile on the lower right. Then finally pan over and pick the profile on the lower left. I'll set the direction to flipped. Set the distance A to 0.12 inches and leave the Boolean set to join. Once that's done, I'll click OK. Since the sketch is a shared sketch, I can continue using it to create another extrusion. I'll click Extrude. Pick the four circles above and below the switch cutouts. Once I have them selected, I'll first change the Boolean to Cut, then set the direction to default, and set the distance A to 0.06 inches. Then click OK. I'll hide the original sketch by right clicking on Sketch 1 and clicking on Visibility. The last feature I want to add to the wall plate insert is a fillet on the front edge, on the left and right sides only, that matches the fillet on the top and bottom of the wall plate. Clicking on Fillet, I'll rotate around to the front and select the left edge, then the right edge. For the radius value, I'll enter 0.06 inches, then click OK. I'll go ahead and save this file, then click over to the assembly file. Notice that there's a lightning bolt indicating that the assembly file needs to be updated. On the Quick Access toolbar, click Local Update. This will update the assembly. Now I can save the assembly file. The last step before I 3D print the model is to export both files as STL files. I'll click over to the wall plate. From the file menu, I'll click Export CAD Format. In the Save As dialog, I want to make sure I'm saving into the correct folder. In this case, the Outlet and Switch Covers folder. From the Save As Type dropdown, I'll choose STL Files. I can click Preview to preview what this will look like. To see what the geometry is going to look like for this model, I can click on the Show Facet Edges. If I need to modify the mesh, I can click on Options. But this looks good. I'll close the preview and save the file. Then I'll switch over to the Insert Model. Pick File, Export, CAD Format. And when the Save As dialog opens, simply click Save to save it with the current file name. That completes the design for my custom wall plate. This is going to get printed on my home-built Foldertech FT5. The version of the switch plate that I installed was printed using glow-in-the-dark blue filament and black PETG. Because who doesn't like things that glow in the dark? This is what it looks like installed. It came out exactly the way I originally envisioned. Now it's on to making a single plate for a few other light switches in the house, and then the illuminated version. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial and would like to see more, please list your ideas down below. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to hit the bell notification icon to find out when we come out with a new video. I'm Stephen Shane, the 3D Professor, and it's time to go home. <laughs>